Number 50. Using the molecular orbital diagrams, predict the bond order for the stronger bond in each pair. And then we have B2 or B2 plus. All right. So always start off with your neutral atom first, just to see what's going on, or your neutral molecule, and then work with your charged ions. Now, over here, I have the correct molecular orbital diagram for boron. Boron has sp mixing, which is why this arrangement of s and p orbitals looks a little messed up uh, because boron is in group three. And remember, if boron is in group three, that means that it has three valence electrons. So that's going to be pretty important when we actually do our diagram. Now just know that the atomic orbitals are on the sides and your molecular orbital is in the middle. So if we're trying to make B2, that means that I have one boron here, another boron here, and B2 in the middle. So let's give it a shot. Each boron has three valence electrons, so I'm just going to start with adding my electrons from the bottom and working my way up to the top. Remember, you always start with the lower energy and work your way up. So I'm going to say that I have one electron. I have to complete this. Remember, an orbital has a max of two electrons, so one, two, and then I'll put a third one over here. Now I'm just going to do the same thing for the other side. One, two, three electrons. And now when you're trying to make your molecule, remember, you just add up your total number of electrons for your atomic orbitals. So three plus three is a total of six that has to be in the middle. And the same exact thing goes on here. So I'm going to start from the bottom, work my way up to the top. So I have to put six electrons for B2. So I have one, two, now I move up to the next one, three, four, and now here I have two orbitals that have the same amount of energy. They're on the same lines. So I have to be fair. I have to put one electron first in one of the orbitals and then go to the next one. So that's my six, two, four, five, six electrons. And this is B2. Now from this information, we could find the bond order because bond orders are just formulas. The, the formula for bond order is this. So a bond order is just basically the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding. And the antibonding are always easy because they're always the ones that have the stars next to them. So just take note, I have a star here, so that's an antibonding. And here are the other stars, but there are no electrons there, so they don't really count. So for us, and maybe in this case, I guess, what we'll do is we'll just say, okay, we're going to do B2. So the bond order for B2 would be something minus something divided by 2. Let's find those antibondings because I think antibonding is easier. And remember, you're only going to look in the middle because that's your molecule. So I have 2 antibonding here because I see that I have a star. And that's about it. So I have two antibonding electrons, and the other ones, one, two, three, four, the ones that don't have a star, that's your bonding. And why did I put divided by zero? Maybe that auto-corrected, but this should be divided by two. So now you can just do the math, right? Four minus two is two. Two divided by two equals one. So my bond order for B2 is a one which means that it would form a single bond. One as a bond order equals one line. Now we're going to do the same thing for B2 plus. But now remember, a plus sign just means that you are losing an electron. And in this case, since it's a plus one, you're losing one electron. Now, if you want to just be a more, you know, more specific. Remember, you have to lose one from your atomic to lose one in the middle. Now, in this case, since it's only losing one, it doesn't matter whether I get rid of this one or this one, but you got to get rid of it from the, the top energy level. So maybe I'll get rid of this one. But by doing that, I have to remove one 
from the top energy of my molecular orbital. And now I can get a new bond order. So let's see, bond order equals something minus something divided by two. Antibonding is always the easiest. Still, there's two. There was no change in that. Seems like in this one, we just dropped our bonding. I have one here and now two, three. So here we go. Three minus two is one. One divided by two is 0 0.5. So we have a bond order of one for B2 and a bond order of a half for B2 plus. Now just know that the stronger bond is always going to be the higher bond order. So whichever one gives you the higher bond order, that's the stronger bond. So in this case, one is greater than 0.5. So the stronger of the two is B2. So the stronger bond is going to be found in B2. Two. And that is your final answer. There you go. Let's color this in. Beautiful. Favorite part of the video. I've grown quite fond of coloring, but when I mess it up like that, now it's not beautiful, but that's okay. Anyway, love it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to helping you with further questions. Good luck on your tests. And have an awesome day. Bye-bye.